So every few days I do like to check my sub count on YouTube to see how close we are to 20,000. And the other day I go to check it and it says 17.5 thousand, which is awesome. But wait a minute, what is the exact number? Did we just reach 17.5k? Are we well over that? Are we really close to 17.6k? Not that it's a big deal, but it's weird. I can't really see the exact number here. So I tweeted at YouTube asking for an explanation and they said, we're abbreviating public sub counts both to maintain consistency across all public surfaces on YouTube and to address creator concerns about stress slash well-being, specifically around tracking public sub counts in real time. And they also sent me this little link here, which kind of details this situation where they're going to be abbreviating the subscribers. You can see there. I just don't really see a need for this. Maybe some people can be stressed about their YouTube sub count. I certainly have never been. I actually think it's a good source of motivation. If I'm gaining subscribers, obviously that's very motivating to me. If I'm losing them, it makes me think I want to do better. And I guess some people could use this feature, but why can't it be optional? Why does it have to be for everyone? And if the concern is stress and well-being for YouTubers, which is a very valid issue, then why not focus this extra effort on things like the adpocalypse or the algorithm, which seem to annoy people way more than this does. I'm by no means an expert on any of these things, but it just seems like even when this update was announced, it was not very popular, and there were a lot of people saying that it should be an optional feature. I can go to the studio page to see the exact number, but why do I have to go out of my way to see my own sub count? I guess it does make the sub counts look a little bit more consistent, but I hadn't even ever considered that as an issue. It's really not a big deal, and I see where they were going with this, but it just really feels unnecessary to me. Apparently other social media sites have been testing similar features, so I don't know what to make of this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew AJT, and today we're going to test our luck at Bandos with the Clan Chat. Now Bandos is a boss I have a long history with. I really like doing this boss. I've done it for a very long time. I used to do this a lot back in like 2008 with a BGS and I would just do solos just fighting the boss normally and I would only get like two or three kills but I didn't know any better back then. Most people didn't either. So it was a good amount of fun and I did get a hilt back then which really was a big drop for me at the time. It was like 25 mil. And of course if you fast forward a little bit to 07, God Wars was actually not released with 07, which a lot of people forget nowadays, but eventually it did come out, I think not even too long after the game was released, like within a year, and I had a lot of fun doing it then as well. And I actually did get a Bandos pet. I didn't really know that much about pets, I think I had kind of taken a break from the game, and I wasn't even really aware of what pets were released at that point. There were less pets overall in the game back then, you wouldn't see people with these huge collections like we have now. And now we have better gear and we've had more time to collect more of them. But we did a duo trip and I did get the Grardor pet, which was my first ever in the game. And that really sparked my pet hunting journey, which you guys have kind of followed with me over these last few years. Unfortunately, the only downside of getting that pet a few years ago is that I haven't really had any motivation to do this boss anymore, despite it being one of my favorite. And this is something that nobody really talks about with pet drops. Sometimes they can actually be kind of a bad thing. I mean, of course not really, because I can still do this boss as much as I want, and I have a very rare pet, which a lot of people are going for and spending literally maybe thousands of hours on. But the reason I don't have motivation to do Bandos anymore is because if I'm going for more pets, it really would make more sense to do Armadil, which is the only God Wars pet which I lack, and that boss is similar GP per hour as far as I know, and it's another God Wars boss, so I pretty much should always do that boss when I want to do God Wars, but I can't complain, of course, and I would rather get this pet early than get it like 10,000 kills in because I don't think I would want to do that much Bandos. It's actually not the first time that this has happened to me before. For example, the Calphite Queen, I spent a lot of time getting the requirements to do that boss very efficiently. And once I got them, I was like, okay, this is going to be a fun, long grind going for the KQ pet. And then I got it under like 100 KC, so... I put all the effort in to get the requirements, and then I didn't really have the fun of enjoying the boss. But again, you really cannot complain because there are so many pets to go for that getting a few of them early is actually a very good thing because you're going to save yourself a lot of time down the road. Has that ever happened to you guys where you get a pet a little bit earlier than maybe you would have liked? Let me know. So if you follow the channel for a little while, you may know that I do some big boss masses every once in a while that I stream and all that. But occasionally, too, in the clan chat, some people might just say, 
hey, you know, anyone want to go to Bandos or some other boss and we'll get a bunch of people to go spontaneously. That's what happened here. And I figured because I have the gear for it, I could be a very good tanker here. And not needing the kill count is also a little bit of an advantage because I don't really have to worry about my damage output here. I'm just pretty much trying to soak as much hits and damage as I can. And here's the gear I use, which is basically full justice R. And I wasn't really sure whether or not I should have magic defense. You can see there that my magic defense is still positive, but that does kind of leave me vulnerable to the major. But at least because I'm high magic level, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And especially with the Ellie, I was hardly taking any damage at all. I think it's almost a little bit ridiculous how high your defensive bonuses can be with Justice R. You know, people say it's really not that great of an armor set because it doesn't give strength bonus or anything, but really for what armor is supposed to do, and that's protect you, Justice R is pretty much the best in the game, and it's very, very nice in places like this. I'm not a fan of the power creep that happens with gear in this game. It seems like every year we have more and more items being released that have higher strength and attack bonus, and even in this case, defense bonus, but if they're going to keep releasing them, I guess I'm going to have to take advantage of it. Normally, I would do some shield switching and walking under the boss every couple hits and things like that to make it a little bit better, but the boss is so easy now that it's really not even necessary. I guess you can really say that with most bosses when you have a team this big, and there are other challenging pieces of content in the game for me, for example, the Inferno or Raids, but Maybe they need to make a challenge mode version of these bosses where they're a little bit more difficult because I would really still like to enjoy these bosses in the level of challenge that they really used to have. So I never really like to call drops at bosses because when I do that, typically the opposite will happen. If I call a pet drop at Armadil, we'll get a curved bone. If I call a dragon pickaxe at Callisto, we get a rune pickaxe. But this time the trip was almost over and I figured let's just try it. Maybe the RNG gods are watching and they will give us the right drop here. Oh my god, I just called that! Oh my god, I called it. I literally called it. I. I called it. Oh my god. Oh, I called it. What the hell? I called it. Oh my god. I called it. Wow, I actually predicted that out of the 100 kills or so that we did. It just happened to be that one. Even though it's not what it used to be, a Bandos Tassets drop is something I'll certainly never get tired of at Bandos. And it's still worth 27 million, which is pretty unbelievable. So that is a very nice split. Thank you to everyone who joined this little Bandos mini mass, which was really fun as always. If you want to join our clan chat, it is Andrew AJT62. We're always looking for new members, and you're free to host any sort of event you want in there as well. I haven't been pushing it as much recently because we do have a lot of members already, but we're always looking for more. So you can hop in there, and you can also join our Discord, which is linked down below. I did want to mention real quick as well, because it was so awesome, that one of the people who was there for the Bandos split actually got a farming pet right after the mass. They literally did a farm run right after I gave them the split, and they got a farming pet, so that is pretty unbelievable. Really good RNG that day. So to close out this video, I just want to show you guys some pretty lucky drops I've gotten recently, which really aren't worthy of their own video or anything, but they're definitely worth showing here. I don't know what it is, but I tend to just be pretty lucky when I play this game, to be quite honest. I don't know if it's YouTube luck or something, but I tend to just be getting things well under the drop rate, at least compared to the time spent. And it doesn't usually seem to average out because when I go back and look year by year, I tend to be pretty lucky every year. You can find some examples where I'm unlucky, like with the Venonatus pet, but those are few and far between. Maybe the law of averages is going to come back to bite me over the next 10 years and I'll just be very unlucky with everything, but I'm going to try and ride this wave as long as I can. Personally, I don't really think luck is a real thing where you can say this person is lucky and they're going to continue to have good luck. I think you can only go backwards and say, this person has historically had good luck based on things that have already happened, so we'll see if the trend continues. I actually did post in the community tab recently asking about what is the best drop you've ever received, and a ton of people commented and some really interesting responses here. Of course, I don't have much time to get into them, but thank you to everyone who commented. I don't always agree with everything YouTube does, but the community tab edition over the last couple years has been a really awesome feature for us to utilize. 
Thank you everyone for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoy. That really helps out the channel. You can also sub if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to get notifications whenever I upload a video, typically every Tuesday. As I mentioned, you can join our clan chat in game AndrewAJT62 and also our Discord down below. You can follow me on Twitter down below at AndrewAJT and I will follow you back if you play RS. You can also check out my Patreon page in the end screen if you want to support the channel even further. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments and thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Take care everyone.